There's a new Neuroxis version 1.9 out, and it's going to get battle tested today by a bunch of regulars. So do sit down, relax, and join us. Pull up a chair, gather around. Supreme Commanders, how are you all doing today? Coming at you from Thursday as I record this from outside the UK. Not that it really makes any difference whether you see this on a Thursday or otherwise. The game's going to be equally good either way. Both teams clocking in at 1483 points according to the old uh, in-game scoreboard supreme scoreboard 2 so it's pretty much neck and neck if you do take a closer look at the analysis between the two players however for the two teams there are 50 points separating them which works out at just under 10 points per player and so with that intro all said and done let's take a closer look at the setup for today a huge thanks out there to tommy he's been emailing back and forth with us as we try to uh, improve somewhat the intro there. We're not yet finished, we're working on it. And so what you see there is sort of an interim version of it. We're still trying to fine tune it, make it look a little cleaner, a little better, a little easier to read. But yeah, there you see the game still up for today. Going down in the last 24 hours as I am bringing this or recording this now. It's the 27th of April. We are halfway through week 17, 2023. And it's a good job that I include those pieces of information up on the screen because otherwise I wouldn't have a clue what day of the week it is <laughs> or what time of year it is. Either way, let's jump on in. We'll start fading in the game sounds and we'll take a look at our setup today. It is a 20 by 20 map. And if you take a look on the Supreme scoreboard up there, you can see it's Neuroxis map gen version 1.9. The first time we've casted uh, a game on this again came out just a day or so ago. All right, so let's unpause the game. We'll get rid of these little menus as well. Get rid of that one. We'll slow down, <laughs> slow down the dime. Yes, we will. We will slow down the time just a tad as we introduce our players. Did have a request from somebody just to move this minimap down a little bit. I have done so. Problem is, the further I move it down, the more I am going to start and cover up the chat down here. I uh, could, of course, then move the minimap over to the other side, but then doing that, uh, you know, we lose this big open space. So I hope there that is of pleasing to the majority of people. And again, if there's anything I can do to improve things for you guys, do just let us know. I read all of the comments, and especially if your comment is then going to get two or three other people agreeing with it, and there's nobody that thinks, no, I like it the way it is, then I will certainly go ahead and change those things. Either way, Let's make a start then. Hannibal below over here for Team 1 in white. UEF going first sand. He's a 1400 rated. He's been a regular on the channel over the last few weeks, having uh, featured at least three times, I think. And so, yeah. Hello, Hannibal. Oh, Hannibal Lowe. <laughs> I was going to call him Hannibal. I realize he's got a no on the end there, but you know me. I just... Me and names just don't go. They never did. They never will. It's just one of those things. Yeah, so moving over to his northwest is Red Vizimos. Is that right? Red Vizimosis. What a fantastic, cool name that is. Uh, he's Aeon. He's gone first sand. He's 1500 rated. And he's uh, grey and dangerous with a name like that. So uh, certainly somebody to look out for there from Team 1. Moving over to his northeast is No More Work. A Cybron. A 1200 rated there. He's gone first sand. He's then gone P Gen, then gone Power. Uh, sorry, P Gen, and then Mex. And so a slightly unusual build when you're so close to a hydrogen uh, farm. I wonder what is... Look at this. The first engineer out the door, then assists the factories producing more stuff. I very, very rarely see a player do this. And it is something that I used to employ from way back when. I'm sure there's going to be somebody that says, Look, it's no good. It hasn't been good since, you know, Moses parted the seas. But, yeah. Either way, I like to see somebody else doing it. And yeah, so slightly unusual tactic here from No More Work. By the way, brilliant name. It does really do sound like a good idea. Over to its north then in Electric Blue is Maverick as Cybron. Hello, Maverick. Another 1400 rated player. Another one going first on there as the old Cybrons. Maverick, of course, one of the old time uh, favorites on Forge Lines forever. He's been around since day one. Um, I must have played hundreds of games with this guy. And as we've said before, very nice. As long as you let him win, <laughs> just don't kill him and everything will be fine. Uh, moving over, just joking, Maverick. Moving over to the west is uh, Slado Noob over here. The 2000 rated, uh, the highest rated player for his team. And indeed the game as Aeon there in green making his way towards the front. Slado Noob, not Shadow Noob, even though they do look very similar uh, at a glance. Um, has always been by the name Slado. 
um, appended Noob onto his name once he joined the Noob Clan, or the Shush Noob Clan either way, um, their SNF, having gone first hand in his base, making his way towards the front. And then last but not least for Team 1, in Burgundy Red, is the Solid Snake. The first guy to have gone Seraphim today, 1400 rated, and first land, yes. <laughs> I never can tell with the Seraphim factories. I, you won't probably notice me always slime, slyly moving his mouse cursor over the factory so he can pretend he knows what he's talking about when in reality he ain't a clue. Either way, that <laughs> rounds it off. You know, spilling all the secrets there. That round, there's no secret at all, is it? You had me sus from day one. Moving down here on the to team two then in orange, um, having gone first and second land is Kaiser Willem the first. And so this guy uh, being the emperor for team two as UEF there making his way towards the front, clocking in at 1600. There is a whole bunch of mass here. And so I assume, well, look at this. He's trying to be cheeky and pinch a bunch of mass there, belonging to the opponent rather than getting his. Uh, that may work if you can get a lot of engineers and support out to help him out. Either way, we'll see if the Emperor's plans come good. Uh, moving over to his extreme west is Ice in purple, having gone first and second land there as Cybran. Ice clocking in at 1,800 rating points. is the highest rated player on his team as, uh, yeah, another Cybran and another guy going first and uh, Moving down to his south in this weird khaki green colour. Is another UEF player who's gone first land. It's Vackle Contact, if I can find. Where is that loose connection up to? Where's he gone? There he is. Now, having already wandered through the pants, so Vackle Contact has already covered quite a lot of ground with his commander there. His base being quite far back. And so, yeah, another UEF commander there coming in at 1400. Lots of 1400s uh, in this game today. Um, in the back then for Team 2 in Sky Blue is Bynam Klotz, another Klotz. What is it with you Germans and the Klotz? I think it means block or something. Who knows? I don't know if it is a block but uh, or a crate or something like that. Either way, he's gone first air as the air player. I, don't, I think this is the first guy we actually have seen there go first air. And here's his commander and Bynam Klotz at 1300 and yet another UEF. An awful lot of sirens and UEFs today. Um, moving to his right in pink is ATP, a Seraphin who's gone first land. And here he is, ATP3, making his way towards the front there, the Seraphin guy. You are nice and shiny. I do think, let's give the Seraphins that. If nothing else, they are shiny in their Chromeness. And then last but not least, for his team, and indeed the entire game, uh, in red. Now, I've got to be careful how I say this, because you could say, oh, it looks like Juraj, but it's not, of course. It's a silent J on both ends of this one. And uh, yeah, pronounced Uri, apparently Uri, or something similar to that anyway. So I hope I've uh, not made too much of a pig's dinner of that there, Uri. The 1600 rated Seraphin, he's gone first and second land and third land. He's working on more stuff all the time and he's making his way towards the uh, lower east side uh, to plug the gap down there. Speaking of which, 3 minutes 23, we've finished introducing all the players. We'll start picking up the pace just a sec. We'll just have one quick look at the map. As we can see, it is a uh, 20 by 20 technically, but these huge black borders uh, let us know that it's not really. Let's uh, just have a little look. We are going to look to improve the ruler here as well, but for starters, let's just see if we can figure out exactly how big this map is. And I think that ruler there is going to be too big. So let me just put a slightly smaller one on. And yeah, there we go. So we line up the two white lines. And so we can see this one is uh, we've got four bars of black. And that's going to probably be on the other side as well. So if I can, do, you know, just do four and four is eight. And so if we take those eight kilometers away from the 20, that gives us a 12 by 12. And yeah, so with that, let's do away with the ruler. We'll pick up the pace and we'll start seeing how this one unfolds. Two versus two over here. And it looks like initially top of the agenda is for the commanders to start reclaiming mass. A few units trying to get run by there from Ice on the Mantis. A very good tactic. He's got some scouts as well. 
And yeah, so this is kind of what I was fearing. This little run by, fantastic move. Um, able to pick up some of the engineers there that were trying to be cheekily strung through. Slado noob. And at least for now, he's, uh, he's having to concertina back to try and get enough stuff together to deal with it. Although Solid Snake with a Tech 1 bomb in there. Beautiful teamwork here from Solid Snake. Uh, trying to help Slado there deal with the run by. Lovely dance there from Ice. Causes the bomber not to get a bomb away. So some real nice play from players all around here. Checking in down here on the opposite side. We've got two versus two situation on this little valley here. that uh, In between these two plateaus. There is also a connection ways down here as well. And so I do, I am a fan of this map. There's not very much water on it, but there, it's not completely dry. If we take a look on the mini map, we do see there's a tiny little pond. Actually, if you tilt your head sideways, almost looks a little bit like a face. The two uh, little ponds there being the iris of the eyes. This here being the nose and this here a bit of a smile. And I'm sure some people see it and there's some people say, well... It's the ugliest face I've ever seen. And even then, you've got to stretch your imagination a bit to see it. But yes, kind of like the uh, the Badlands map. I always thought that looked like the face of a baby. And I'm sure some of you have always thought, yeah, I always thought that. And then there's been others. What the hell's he on about? <laughs> there's no face on the Badlands army. No baby. What sort of baby is it? Maybe one belonging to the Seraphim. <laughs> Anyways few units back here from ATP as well. Bynum Klotz uh, sending engineers in. Are these... Uh, well, the initial order of the day was to reclaim. Look at this, a cheeky attack move. Um, but Bynum Klotz is rolling himself onto the scene as well. And so this could end up being a three versus two situation. Um, although Hannibal, the first, going to get himself the tech two. And so this is somewhat crucial. His opponent going for the gun. ATP3 as the Seraphin. Well, that's it. Now I wonder whose are the pings? Is it an assist request from Hannibal? Wanting uh, no more work to help with this? Or could it be the opponents that realise we've got to deal with this and fast? ATP though, rather than going straight in with his gun... Alex to go for regen. Look at this teamwork. ATP, Engineer. We had Engineers there from Bynam Klotz. And we also had uh, the, the Commander there from you right And showing that he gets this upgrade ASAP. Bynam Klotz pulls his Engineers back. He's going for the gun and all. But Hannibal already with the first triad online. Now going for the second. And so this is going to be a heavy fought for area. We see here, <laughs> you right trying to trick a couple of tanks around the back. Um, Halibalol says, oh no, you don't. And responds with a platoon with about 10 times as many. Maverick, uh, this time, having a bit of fun with the Tech 1 Bomber. Got himself two kills so far. So I'm sure who's he going for? Is he just on a lazy patrol? And looks like the plateau over on the north side, which is landlocked off. There's no uh, ramp onto there. So the first team that secured it, team number one from the top there. Really feels like the action's over here. Nano repair, not complete, but uh, ATP does have the gun. And so he's certainly able to make use of that. He does have a couple of uh, triads firing down on his position. Now just the one. Hannibalo forced to back off. No more work in there as well. But uh, no, Bynum Klotz now applying pressure. And importantly, ATP was not bullied into a cancellation. He's also got the... Uh, the, it's, it's the Chrono Enhancer, the Damage Enhancer already for, it, for his that. Oh, it's of course the Nano Repair. This is going to be so dangerous. I'm, I'm falling over my own words ten times over here. But ATP, he's going to have three. He's got three upgrades inside ten minutes, nine minutes. 
He's got the rate of fire. He's got the damage amplifier. And he's got nano repair. This is such a dangerous commander to have. Nine minutes and a couple of seconds. Look at this. He's just standing up against four triads. Sure, they will eventually break through his health, but... He's just able to put so much damage down in the interim. This is a masterful piece of move here from No More Work. Standing in front of the point defense to prevent a lot of these shots from ATP getting through. It's going to deny him the vet as well as deny it. Oh! ATP! Dance! Man, oh man. That was close. And now you can see fancy bit of footwork there from the 1200. Keeping him alive. We just roll around the first 10 minutes and thus far not a single commander dead Hannibal being very very aggressive he is half health he doesn't have the gun he's tech 2 what's he doing oh he's trying to he's trying to bag himself ATP oh man this is so close he just needs one tiny little kill and he gets his rank of vets he gets overcharged Bynum Klotz tries to chase him down and a little bit of luck there, I think. Bangs into Urine, just gets out of range. Hannibal playing loose and fast, but man. A little bit of luck, it certainly did pay off. And now the first point defense from Team 2 on the line as well. It is a 1 versus 4 situation point defense wise. Now Hannibal O. 2,000 hit points now. He's repping up 20 per second. Oh, he almost had a shield online. Uri says, oh no, you don't. Gets himself mobile missile launcher there first. Outranges both the point defense and the shield. Quick check in the mid. Not taking much look there. See how the Emperor's doing. Up versus Red Vizimosis. Pushed him all the way back to base. No More Work sends a few units across to help reinforce. And Red Vizimosis already on the Tech 2. Got an Obsidian here. And so the Obsidian plus the support there from No More Work. And I think that will hold or force Kaiser to back off a little bit. And perhaps No More Work might be nice to just quickly hand these units over to Red Vizimosis so he can A, use them and B, get them out the way of uh, parts of his base that he's going to need to rebuild. Checking back over on the west side. It's like gun with gun. Plenty of units. Slado Noob a little low on health. He does have the shield, but it's collapsed. He's about half health. Yeah, and this is hugely important. The high-rated player knows that clearly he's going to be a priority target for the enemy. Um, so once his health starts shedding, um, it is crucially backs off. Um, how close is he to a rank of vet? Well, not too far. He's about 20% uh, or so to go. Should I, should I just say 80% complete? Either way, he's now uh, having a go on the front line. Now, if he can overcharge this tech two point defense. Yeah, and there he does. He does it. He damages. And with that, he does then get his second star and all the hit points and regen that come with it. Red Vizimosis, though, over here, pushing the Emperor back. Thanks to a lot of support as well from No More Work. I do like this. This has been a beautiful counter-attack. He's almost been pushed back to halfway, despite knocking right on the door there. Some real nice teamwork from Team 1. Almost this. Titans... Wackle contact, sneaking some Tech 3 units through a wide open door. And it's not clear why he's now going for the uh, storage. Ping's going down. He does, though, get that point defense. That was kind of crucial. Looks like he's going for more mass extractors. Energy storage, decent targets. There we go. And so looks like this. Uh, just those two Titans have been more about trying to stall... The attack. Now, this is an interesting play here from Maverick. The Cybran, the 1400, has opted to put a naval yard in his little pond on his side. And not just Tech 1, straight to Tech 2. 
And so these cruisers are going to have a quite a wide area of coverage. They, of course, direct fire, being the Sirens, and do have SAM site coverage. 15 minutes then so far. Check back in on the west side. All the commanders here looking very healthy. And looks like primarily interested in the spam that's accompanying each other. And once they do chew through that spam, they turn their attention to the opposite commanders. Slado knew they're working on a few static tech one point defense behind just to help prevent any overruns that may be afoot. Decides to overcharge a tech one scout. If ever there was a definition of overkill, that's it. We'll check back in down now on the lower east side. ATP3, who's it's like his, his team there losing the point defense. Um. You ride backs right off. I'm kind of surprised. Ping request there. I assume ATP3 would like control. And there he is. He does gain control. So this is crucial. Certainly if you're going to leave one commander here facing... Well, what was three? And looks like it is now one versus one. But Hannibal o is very much... Uh, in control of this situation. Multiple shields, multiple point defense. Um, surely ATP3 isn't thinking of moving in. Or maybe he is, and I'm not sure what this ping's about. Is it his team basically saying what you're doing? Or is it ATP saying, hey guys, help us out with some air or something? It's difficult to say. Hannibal moves forward. He's half health, but has got a full shield. Both the shields collapse. So Hannibal needs to overcharge. That's it. Overcharge the Ilshis. And it looks like ATP3 has been primaried. Look at the ship. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at the hit points evaporate. ATP3. I love that play there from Hannibal. He could have carried on going for the Ilshis, but all of a sudden redirected the remaining fire that he had against the enemy commander. And nano repair or not, the hit points just evaporated. And with that, first player bows out. 16 minutes, 30 some seconds there. Team 2, a player down. Numerous handoffs there taking place. Uh, perhaps players unsure who should be responsible. And the Emperor is left holding the can at 17 minutes. Check back over here what we got. <laughs> Look at this. Maverick, the Cybran is using... Ooh, that almost hurt, didn't it? Uh, the Cybran rounds there flying towards the screen. So, uh, yeah. The mini fat boy. Very legit tactic. And uh, Vagal contact. And his mass extractors and his forward opera a base. They're looking a little shaky. He sends a couple of Titans forward. Just find themselves walking into some Cerberus fire as well. And together we're now with the second destroyer. The first Titan goes down. And what we got here? Flax. Well, they're not going to do anything by themselves. That's a little misclick there. First Ravager online here from Vacal Contact. That's going to shut down a large area. Let's just have a look at the... Well, there we see it almost up to the plateau. So perhaps if he can get another one here, that will cover literally both sides. And almost to the late here. It'd be almost impossible, I think, to thread a unit through there without garnering the attention of the Ravager. And Vacal Contact on the opposite side of the map. Threading the through units through here into Hannibal O's base. Hannibal O is seen here losing his front line. He's still over there with his commander. But no more work. He's been a fantastic team player. I've seen, this is the third or fourth time I've seen no more work on this game. Send units across. Or in this case, personally coming over to deal with an ally's base that's been overrun. 
Red Viziosis over here head to head with Kaiser. Kaiser's got the nano, the shield, the gun. What's Red got? Well, the sensor suite and the range, but not the rate of fire. Sure, he would like the rate of fire if he can find himself the time to pause. Just uh, overcharge into the side of Kaiser there, but Kaiser with the shield is looking very comfortable at this moment in time. Quick check back over here. Maverick with his destroyers pushing those forward. He's got some units escorting them. Wagner's and Rhinos, but he's up against a couple of bricks now from Ice. So the bricks together with the loyalists, these may be enough to cause the destroyers a bit of a problem. Maverick so far with three. It's nice and pretty, but then there were just two. Now these bricks are just going to be able to eat this Cerberus fire. As though they're being tickled to death. Second destroyer. There's another brick coming up to reinforce. Down that goes. And so what was a real nice play there from Maverick is starting to fall apart a little bit. Nice little flanking move down here. Uri going round the back. And this is going to force Hannibal, who was so strong on this position, right back. He's got numerous forces over here. Silver lining, though, for Team 1. We've got this little gunship raid over here from Solid Snake. Not seen too much from this guy, the air player for Team 1. But it is starting to roll around that time. Where we should see uh, air, certainly the Tech 3 stage, making more and more of an impact on things. Gunships just picking apart some of the defensive structures there belonging to Team 2. Uri backing off down the middle. I'm sure if he wanted, he could uh, send that forward and pick off Hannibal. Despite his shield, he doesn't have the gun. Yes, he's got Nano. Looks like backing off all round. A lot of explosions back here. No more work. Destroying his old unused factories as well as his power generators. No doubt to reclaim. Yeah, there he is. I want that mass. There you see, 194 mass per factory. And that's going to assist. And help him upgrade in his uh, mass extractors there. Going from Tech 2 to Tech 3. Looks like Maverick's uh, doing similar things in his base. It's that time. So what's uh, feel like the first little lull we've had in activity. A very um, evenly spaced front line. We can see if we stick the mirror down from the top left to the bottom right. Exactly 50-50 split. The one exception is this plateau up here. Where we see Team 1 dominating this side of the plateau. Which uh, rightfully would be split right around here. Between themselves and their opposite numbers. So we take a look at the economies then. Just before we get to the 23rd minute. It's 1,300 versus 1,100 mass per tick favouring Team 1. And I reckon this little piece of the plateau and these mass extractors, we see that there's at least five of them there. We're all at the Tech 2 stage. And we've also got to see a cheeky TML snipe here from Maverick. Things going down. And that's for the Corsairs. And he's going for the uh, mass extractor facilities there. Bynum clots quick on it though. Sending ASF over to deal with those Corsairs. Plus ice is no beginner. So if you saw Maverick going for these tap missile defences. He would know. What the plan is. And AXC is working on more and more. So the window of opportunity for Maverick there is starting to fade away. Oh! And there we see it. Hannibal did go too far forward. And we did see you right picking him off with his superior army. 
You could have done that a little while ago. I think what Uri did, he moved these units round here. He regrouped and just went for superior firepower, overwhelming him. And with that, 24 minutes, it's a five versus five. Monkey Lord here belonging to ICE, utilizing its long range cannon. 15 kills so far, 3,900 mass. The Monkey Lord is just such a good unit. I know some people use it wrong. They throw it in. They think it's the first cheapest experimental. It's stealth. It's got a high damage primary weapon. But I think it's great its strength sometimes is just to hang it back a bit and make use of this long range cannon. You can see more ravages over here from Vacal Contact. He's not creeping them forward. Rather from side to side, looking to plug the front line. And some sniper bots on the opposite side. Slado Noob. I love this unit. Five of them so far on the line. And again, that forces your enemy. If you bring them forward, your enemy is forced either to press or pull back. They can't just eat sniper bot fire all day long for free. They've got to do something. Checking back over here, you right. Of course, having crushed Hannibal, it's now moving forward into the base. Handed over to Red Vizimosis. What a name, man. I really like that name. Sure, I'm going to get tongue twisted sooner or later. But for now, Uri having a nice work there. And this is the first base that we're seeing getting really wiped out we did see uh, red vizimos's main base there earlier on get pushed back from the kaiser but at the same time that he's experiencing this attack on his side base he's pushing the kaiser out of the middle we saw kaiser drop back to 50 50 and it looks like he's going to be kicked out of there as well ravager fire over here Working on a bunch of engineers that are trying to bag themselves reclaim there. <laughs> a hub belonging to Red Vizimosis that was also on reclaim duty. Then finds itself destroyed. For somebody else to reclaim. And a chicken bot from you, right? An experimental over here in red. There is a GC though from Red Vizimosis. I've just got to call him Red Vizzy. Shadowing the old chicken, and it looks like might just oh, I don't know. Maybe Uri's just regrouping his units. Best tactic. Get him together. And here's the GC. Red Vizzy does have a few shields, so we'll be able to eat the first few shots from the chicken. String more shields in. Uh, it looks like the Tham the siege tanks there from Uri are going after the shields as a primary. The chicken butt doing the funky twist. And this is going to be close. More units trickling down though from no more work. And so whatever happens here, it does look like the GC finally wins that fight. He's able to get it out of Ion Storm's way in time. See no more work moving his units out the way as well on the other side. Well, it's going to be close, but no, the Ion Storm does bag itself the GC. Either way, I think that's a win for Team 1. The uh, two mass wrecks are far closer to their own base. And no more work with a few units in the area to shield. Check back over here. Huge attack from ice going up into Slado Noob's forward operating base. Numerous experimentals. And the GC there does manage to take out the second Monkey Lord. And there's a whole bunch of herbs as well. And they're going to be able to reclaim this uh, wreckage should they wish. Let's have a quick look. What are we talking? Well, add all those numbers up. You've got 50,000 mass right there. And that for the 2k player. Beautiful drop over here. Vackle contact spots a weakness on Team 1's plateau. Oh, oh, attack missile strike there. Man. Maverick. You fired a tap missile at three titans. You killed two of them. Go on, fire this one. Get it. I, re I really want... <laughs> Maverick, you mother sticker. That, I thought, was a lost cause for sure. 
Just goes to show when players are paying attention what's capable. Team 2 have got to be feeling thankful now that Vakal Contact went to the bother of laying down these Ravagers. Because other than that, it's feeling a little vulnerable right now. They do have a Monkey Lord back here. How many kills? 13, 3, 17, 11. Yes, yeah, so these Ravagers, 50 kills easy between them. Another 9 on the line there, that one. The Uri with yet another experimental on the line. Maverick bringing a couple of his bolts over. The Cybran destroyers trying to put long range pot shots in. No more work sending this army back across to deal with. But now a fat boy as well from the Kaiser. Emperor's lending his long range artillery support. A lot of Oblivion point defence turrets are going to be nice to defend against experimentals. That is, of course, until the chicken unloads its second plasma ball into them. Takes almost all of them out. GC over here from Red Vizzy, but it's going to be too late. Halfway complete. Maverick, though, hanging back with his Tech 3 Navy. He's got at least four ships there. And right now... They're focusing on the chicken. And so Red Vizzy, not for the first time, finds his main base overrun. Not completely destroyed, but not far off. Just got a few units of build capacity. A few factories in the area. Chicken now from Solid Snake being sent forward. Very nice work. Indeed. As we say that to players at opposite ends of the map getting an experimental online inside the same second. One of which is an experimental bomber. Three kills so far. They were uh, just anti-air, I believe. Ping's going down. Bomb was able to get a couple of kills but didn't break through the second shield. And Uri gets his bomber picked up. Bynum clots paying attention. Is escorting it? Oh, what a bomb that is. That's going to hurt. And suddenly, no more works. Base is going to be working no more. What a beautiful bomb. Right, not just going for the first thing he sees, but picking his target selectively. It's a pointless going for this. You've got a tech three shield. Your eye says, I know, but this bit ain't over shielded over here. Bang! Fusion reactor, quantum gateway there, belonging to Slado Noob. That has been a fantastic bomber. Over 67,000 mass worth of stuff killed. It's still alive, and Bynum Klotz is still escorting it. Bomber re-emerges. Yeah, Slado Noob knows what to do. Start spamming Sam sites, not just because of this bomber, but clearly your team has lost air. And the bomber now working on the air grid of his direct opponent, Solid Snake. The bomber is starting to... Look how quick Team 1 have been able to establish Sam sites. And the experimental bomber with 103 kills. I think it's going to get too much more done. There it goes. Very, very nice experimental bomber. Fantastic team play. So we're checking over here. Fat boys belonging to Team 2. Two megaliths from Team 2. But numerous GCs coming down from Team 1. Together... With Rambo presets here. Slado Noob. What's he working on? Flak. That's to deal with the broadswords here. That Byman Klotz has got down. Broadswords fantastic at dealing with experimentals. Look how quick these uh, support commanders are able to build stuff. Beautiful with the fat boys covering fire. 
the first and the second Megalith are down. And so this is now two GCs versus three Fat Boys. Two other Monkey Lords as well that's gone online in the nick of time. But all of these Rambo commanders here from Slado Noob, they've been able to deal with the broadswords thanks to their ability to rush Sam sites down. Uh, this is going to force uh, Byman Klotz. He can't fly around here for two ever. He's going to lose so many aircraft if he does. The GC's still making their ways through. This was a large construction facility over here belonging to ICE. You know, a lot of drone kennels, quantum gateways. GC's, look how much fire they're eating. I like that they've split off, forcing the uh, fat boys to pick between them. One of them goes down. The second GC. This is a five-star GC. Just 18 kills, but it's a five-star. Giving you some kind of idea just how deadly it's been. Meanwhile, all of this is taking place. See another attack coming through the middle from Team 1. But the Fat Boys, having defeated their primary objective, GC over here. Standing proud. No doubt having completed its mission, it's not going to get much more done. And the fat boys can roll forward now. That's four fat boys. And Ice, Commander, got to be a little bit careful there. He's in the sea, but he's worth so... Versus so many support commanders. These guys can rush torpedo launchers very fast. And that would leave him very vulnerable very quickly. Ping's going down. That is a billy nuke. Vackel contact. UEF Commander fires a billy at the support commanders. Look at that. Sladonu paying attention. Recognises the billy and abandons ship very quickly. Switches direction and keeps all his support commanders online. There's six of them here. And if they get too close to the fat boy, I realise this is at the detriment of battle elsewhere. But this what really feels like matters. Aqua contact coming up very close. He's tech two. So be able to build billy's reasonably quickly assuming he's got the eco to do it the support commanders climb out of the sea one of them goes down down goes the second but just look at the damage they're able to put out versus four experimentals down goes the third ravages coming up all the time battle contact overcharging them there goes the fourth just two remain One remains, and some masterful play from Team 2. Very, very well played, and Vackel Contact as well, ballsy with his billies. And having mission complete, fires a billy over here. Look at all those engineers there. Oh, that has beautiful picked up. Most of those, correct me if I'm wrong, I think were Tech 2. So let's have a look. Vackel Contact suddenly finds himself a 5-star with 55 kills. 18,800 mass killed. He only had a couple of kills a minute ago. They must have been Tech 2 to bag himself that much material that quick. Quick check elsewhere. What's the situation? Well, you're right. Holding the line. It's got uh, numerous experimentals as well. The Emperor with a couple of fat boys over here making his way towards the mid. Two more over here together with Vackel Contact. And so the Fat Boys, masterful at what they've been able to achieve. Let's just have a look on the air numbers as we approach uh, just past the 37th minute. Solid Snake, what have you got, my friend? 116. And we'll take a look at Klotz. 134. And so pretty close, about 15 to 20%. Uh, Favouring the team down south, of course. Uh, the team up north. We've got a lot more SAM sites thanks to that experimental bomber forced them to. So this is really going to feel like it depends where the battle is fought as to who is going to win. We'll have a little look at the Ecos as well just while we're waiting for these fat boys to move forwards. Totals uh, 2.4 million versus 2.1 favouring Team 1. So about 300,000 mass ahead over the course of the game. And taking a look at incomes right now, it's 1.9 versus 
And the numbers are fluctuating all the time. 1-7 to 1-4. Uh, Favouring Team 1. I think it just happens to be who's reclaiming at the time. There's so much mass in Experimentals now. Let's say 75 there, 30,000 there, another 47, another 37. I mean, we're talking 200,000 mass just by the side of this little pond. GC decides to crawl up outside the lake. Oh, no, that was so close. Masterful play there from Kaiser. Moves one of his fat boys over. So the shield blocks the fire from the GC in its dying moments. Just keeps his fat boy on line. Uh, heavily damaged fat boy is still capable of putting out so much damage he just hang it a little further back and you right now with a large counter attack this here we've got four chickens accompanied with the siege tanks flanked by five fat boys and preceded by a billy nuke there from vagal contact oh no the billy nuke's gonna oh it's gonna be close Actually suspecting that that Billy Newt was shot down to uh, attack missile defense just before going down. So I think that was perhaps a little bit of luck there from Team 2's point of view. One of the chickens down. You're right. Elects to split his forces up. Chickens one way, siege tanks the other. There goes the second chicken. But runs into numerous experimentals from Team 1. Two monkey lords and a megalith. The megalith then goes down. Down goes the chicken. Down goes the monkey lord. There's the ion storm. Just one experimental and that's gone down. So untold numbers of devastation there. Never quite seen so many experimentals go down as quick as that. Sladonub now with a donut in the area. And that's huge because, of course, we've seen his team slightly behind on numbers and operating here at the perfect range for these air to air missiles. And what's this? Red Miseosis with 40 Tech 1 bombers, and they've been allowed through. Bynum Clots, attention elsewhere briefly, is now moving in. What are they going for? But it looked like the Ravagers. I don't think he was able to pick them off. Bynum Clots there deals with all of the bombers in time. A couple more are trickling through here. Um, from Red Vizzy, but it looks like their objective has failed. And if they'd have one piece of advice for the Kaiser right now, it would be to put a couple of SAM sites over here. Seeing that the enemy is taking a dislike to your forward base, and we've seen how many experimentals have come through the lake, it's vital that uh, bombers are not able to punch a hole through your base. The experimentals are then able to exploit. Quick check over on the other side. Scouting run there from Klotz. Takes a look at what he can see. There's more experimentals from you, right? Meeting experimentals from the opposite number. <laughs> look at this. A fat boy versus Megalith. Was a two versus one. Megalith manages to bag himself one of the fat boys. Does he get the second? It's going to be very close, but no. I'm sure one more shot would have done it thanks to the broadswords there. Broadswords. And Klotz. He's now dealing with uh, enemy Wagner's there from. Sorry, v Wagner's? What am I talking about? Uh, the enemy gunships that Maverick was sending down. Fagnus, of course, the submersible Tech 2 tank. Renegades. There we go. Just some fantastic team play here. Difficult. It still looks 50-50. Team 1 perhaps uh, 
concerned about that initial drop of uh, looking like this area here is a little more defended than it was before. We've seen Team 1 push Team 2 out over here. These are three pieces where 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, we saw the Ravagers stand for the opposite team. And support commanders down here. This is really cheating. Slado Noob, support commanders right on the other side of the map. Picking off experimental wrecks that quite right should belong to team two. Very, uh, very good play. Very aggressive. Of course, you do risk losing the support commander. But I assume as long as the support commander bags himself the experimental, it's gone well. One of the chickens from Uri strolling once again too close to the defences from Team 1. Keeps two of them as well as the escorting siege tanks, lightning tanks. And walks headlong into about a million engineers from the northern team. Desperate to get hold of some of this mass. What have we got here still? Where you see it. 100,000 by the time you tot all of that together. Everybody, just engineers, if one of them gets through and gets to have a suck on that wreck for a couple of seconds. And then Solid State says, look, I've had enough of this. Have some of that. And suddenly, the vast majority of the units that were escorting Uri's chickens find themselves turned into dust. That was a fantastic bomb. And taken out of dodge as well doesn't just keep going until it dies knows byman clots will have his attention on it as it makes another run these three chickens here from you right one of them very heavily damaged notice how he splits them off realizes the heavily damaged one's about to go down doesn't need his other chickens to unnecessarily eat that ion storm Byman Klotz then shoots down the experimental bomber. Silver lining, of course. He did get the chicken and all of those units. Oh, Slado Noob, though. With donuts. Four of them. We're also seeing some Tech 3 artillery make its way across the fields. The Kaiser Willem the first. With a Duke. Four kills thus far. So can't have been online long certainly got its work cut out for it if it's intending to break through those seraphim shields what's this maverick ah, he is of course on the northern team i assume maverick has elected uh, to hand stuff off because he's got nothing left and maverick indeed he does at 45 minutes and some seconds calls it a day Probably tired. It's late where he is. So the base handed over. Handed over. Thank you, fun. To Slado Noob, who right now is using his donuts to great effect versus yet more chickens. You're right. With a never ending supply of these things, apparently. Down goes another. These donuts just frying up the situation. And for now, he's got just about enough to put Blyman Clots off. A very, very forward chicken there. Donut does eventually pick that off. The amount of firepower that so many donuts atop of each other are capable of putting out is horrific. What you got? Seven donuts now. How many ASF? as uh, the opposite number 160 mm. 160 ASF versus uh, 7 donuts 6 or 7 beautiful Billy Newt once more Vackle contact is certainly shaking the enemy up with those things Solid Snake with uh, escorting ASF. I still don't think he's been able to match Byman Klotz. He hasn't. I don't think that's going to matter too much when you're sat next to this many donuts. 
although you don't want to hover over lightning tanks too long Sladon Uber's absolutely got to make this pay goes over a full health fat boy like it's nothing well you either want to attack or retreat you don't want to hang around eating this much sand fire solid snake just losing so many ASF and now Byman Klotz going for the donuts let's have a look how many is he able to get well first pass none apologies for the shoddy camera work there's a weird sort of height where space does or doesn't work GC over here uh, belonging to Sladonoob. He's been able to sneak that round while attention's been focused elsewhere. Um, there's not too much round here. It's a lot of shields. There's broadswords working on it. Yes, there's a quantum gateway. But with support commanders and shields, I don't think too much more there's going to be done. Sladonoob with these donuts. So fantastic work. And just as I was saying, I think this artillery is going to struggle to break through. With two of them online, together with a sat here. Just like the old Department of Defense. The defense sat really means the aggression sat. And that is Solid Snake's uh, air grid. Half of it gone and the other half severely struggling. He's got a lot of shields, but it really looks like the opposite number are taking a particular dislike to him. We'll check back in over here. Oh my goodness, how many donuts? That's two donuts down. There's a third. There's a fourth donut. What are they doing? There goes donut number five. There's donut six. There's donut seven. Wow. Slado Noob just dropped seven donuts on the far side of the map. That will please Team 2 over there. In addition to any police that find their ways this side of the map. But while all of this has been going on, Uri is taking the opportunity to exploit the confusion. I like a boxer. Pow pow on the other side. Have some of this right hookage. As three chickens wake their way through <laughs> for about the millionth time. Red Vizimosis' main base finds itself in tatters. Oh dear. At least no more work. And again, no more work to the rescue. The first chicken down. The second one low health. This one over here. Still making its way up. Yeah, no more work. Gonna want to get your uh, gunships and anything else over here. Solid Snake with an experimental bomber moving across the map. And now the gunships are sent to deal with this chicken. This chicken, though, oh, it's not too far away from No More Works Commander. Is Uri making a move for it? Well, no, I don't think so. I think he's going for the main base. Apologies, who's just gone down? Solid Snake. I assume he must have eaten a long range fire. Taking a quick look over here. What's it doing? Sladono, why is your experimental bomber parked on the floor? Oh, he does eventually realize it just in time to allow Byman Klotz to shoot it down. Perhaps a minor oversight there. The highest rated player finds himself inheriting more and more stuff. Bang! What was that? Slado Noob. Apparently committing suicide. Not sure if he did. If he did control K himself or if that was a mistake. Suddenly, Team 1, it were looking so strong. I mean, look at this. Team 2 have been pushed right into the corner of their map. But there's so much colour down here. And at the top, it's looking a little grey. And it, not for no more work. We've seen such incredible team play from this guy. Again, I always like to take the rating into account. A 1200. Who's been just masterful. 
And yet another Billy Newt here making its way towards these engineers. Let's see how many kills. Where is he? Where is he? Vackle contact. Well, he's got 96. The chicken was called off. Put that right on the edge of the tap missile defense. Bang! Beautiful. And now how many does our old wobbly friend got? 255. He just got 159 kills in one shot. One shot. Who said billies were no good? I think they're one of the best defensive weapons that the UEF have got. They actually are defensive weapons, the Billy. I mean, unless you really want to put your commander in over in harm's way. It's such a long map. But yeah, the artillery here banging down on Ved Vizimosis' air grid, the base that he's inherited there. That's just solid. Uh, Slad on Uba, I beg your pardon, as yet another donut finds its way across the map. This one moving in by its lonesome. Is he going for the nuke defense? Well, he got it. He got it if that was the plan. Are they going to be sending one in? I tell you what, Uri, man. This has been just masterful. Uri is sending these chickens all over the map. Like, I don't know how many of this guy's made. It's starting to feel like 20. He's sending them all over the shop. And everybody else on his team has been dealing with defense, dealing with air, dealing with experimentals that have come through here, support commanders, long-range artillery, economy, you name it. And it's just enabled you, right, to just send more and more chickens out. And I think it's starting to look a little bit like, despite the disadvantage on map coverage, he's pulled it back to 50-50. Despite being that way for the majority of the game, let's have a look at the Ecos, what we got there. Totals, uh, 4.6 versus 4.5, favouring Team 1. So still about 100,000 mass ahead up top, but I think that advantage is going to start slipping away awfully quick. Full health, chicken over here. It's got some coverage with it. Uh, Red Vizzy does manage to deal with the chicken there, but we've got one more over here. No more work. It's really been made to work this game, let's face it. Throwing gunships forwards at the chicken. Couple of strap bombers as well as Corsairs. And they will eventually put this thing to bed, but not before it goes straight through his air grid. I think he's going to blow up in place. Indeed he does. No more work, defeated by the Kaiser. And suddenly, Red Vizimosis finds himself in a one versus five situation. And despite being a 1500 rated on a 1483 average, I think the APM is going to out APM him. Good and proper, not to mention he's got umpteen chickens. Long range static car, T3 artillery raining down on him. And I think all the advantages that his team have enjoyed all game are fast, slipping away. He's able to put uh, a piece of artillery back now. The Emissary, it's got one kill so far. But there's uh, more rounds raining through all the time. And so, yeah, look at now. Team 2 is ahead on mass now, so the lower team. So when we checked just a moment or so ago that Team 1 had a 100,000 lead, that has now reversed. And so, yeah, I'm not sure what Red Vizimosis can do about this. 55 minutes. Chickens on all flanks. Got defense sats over here. Oh, he's almost put this one to bed. 85 kills. Chicken is very close to a new rank of vet. Does have this Tech 3 Navy on his home turf to fire. The emissary over here. He's got a few ASF, but doesn't look like he's got anywhere like enough numbers. Some Bynum clots. It's going to finally deal with all this air. For unknown reasons, the chicken is still alive. I don't think it's going to matter. We've got more chickens here. They 
they come filing in two by two well it's more like one by four but the song was two by two you know what i mean trying to make something happen when it doesn't oh, oh a massive wave of tap missile launchers there going for vackel contact and they almost hit him vackel contact doesn't like it fires a billy back oh attack attack oh they fire in oh, and is he gonna get him you know if ever you have wanted tap missiles to hit a commander this is it but they miss and the billy connects very well played vackel contact now two pieces of artillery firing across the map the other way but i don't think it matters Red Vizimos's base finds himself completely overrun. And with that artillery or not, he decides that's it. Numerous experimentals are cancelled, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope you enjoyed that game. Do leave us a like if you did. Uh, give out uh, your uh, thoughts on the new Neuroxis 1.9. I thought it was a fantastic map. I really did like what they did with the pulls. And thank you very much. The channel has finally made its way towards the first thousand subscribers. So for everybody that's been a part of that, a massive thanks. Um, appreciate that. And until next time from me, wherever in the world you may be, take care. Bye-bye.